Central Church, living the gospel of Jesus Christ, being God's love with our neighbors in all places. God calls us to feed the hungry. We do that. God tells us to find those people who don't have any. We do that. God calls us to care about our community. And we do that. Central Church, across from the Cider Mill in Endicott, serving around the world. May hearts be willing, like Mary who showed humble surrender, like Joseph who exhibited unconditional trust, may our hearts be willing, like the shepherds who displayed awestruck wonder, like the angels who sang glorious praise, for all who are willing to receive the gift of the Savior born in Bethlehem. Grant that we may have the peace of Christ as we wait, the love of Christ as we act, and the grace of Christ as we speak. Tonight, we light all the candles. The first candle is the hope shining for those worn thin by times of waiting. The second candle is the hope shining for those worn down with wearied souls. The third candle captures the hopeful expectation of those eagerly watching for God's glory in our day. The fourth candle is the hope of a new tomorrow shining for those seeking freedom from the wounds of this world. Tonight, we light the Christ candle. This candle radiates the hope of Jesus Christ to all who are willing to receive it. Let us now join the call to worship. Come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us come to God with thanks. Now be seated. Tonight's first scripture reading is Isaiah 9, 2 through 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at, at the harvest. As people exult when dividing plunder for the yoke of their burden at, and the bar across their shoulders, the, ro the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of the Midian for all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolling in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born today, a son given to us, authority arrests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continuously, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. We will establish and uphold it with with justice and with righteousness from then, from this time onward and for, furthermore. The zeal of Lord of hosts will do this.
everyone. If I could have the children come up, come on up here and, and sit down for just a few. Can I come sit by you guys? I'll tell you what, will you go that way? I'll go this way. All right? All right. Let's see if we can get sitting up here. How are you guys? Wow, look at all the people here. Hi, Alice. Hi, Alice. Your what? Is she coming? Alex is going to go invite somebody else. We'll wait for just a few more minutes. How is everybody? You guys all doing good? It's a big day of waiting, huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, and you have all those days off school. Whatever are you going to do? So, Just wait for the and to play with our toys. Okay. Oh, presents. Okay. Well, speaking speaking of presents, guys, I've got this. Anybody know what this is? A present. A box. A box. The box with the bow. All right. All right. Um, so, what do you generally do with a present? Open it. Open it. So, everybody think I should open this? Yes. yes. Open it. All right. All right. Well, inside. Okay. Inside this box, I've got. Let's see. I've got these. Does anybody know what these are? Can you smell them? Alex, tell me, what does that smell like? Cinnamon, maybe. What does that smell like? Cinnamon. What does it remind you of? Does it remind you of? Cinnamon. Cinnamon. How about, does it remind anybody of Christmas? Yeah, it makes you hungry. So, so this kind of smells like Christmas, right? Yeah. Okay. I got another box in here. I'm going to take top off of it. And guess what? Okay, these are bells. Anybody know what kind of bells these are? What are they? Jingle bells. Jingle bells. Now, so do they kind of sound like Christmas? Yeah. You hear these? You think of Christmas, right? Yeah. They sing All right. I've got yet another box in here. There's boxes inside boxes. Does everybody know what this is? And, and it has a J on it for who? Jesus. Awesome. Okay. So this is one of those things you might see. So, so far we can smell Christmas and we can hear Christmas, right? And we can see signs of Christmas all over the place, right? Yeah. Do you think I have another box in here? Yeah. Yeah. Not in the summer. <laughs> Not in the summer, though. All right. I've got this little box. See this little box here? Yeah. yeah. It has a bear on it. It has a bear on it, but this is actually what you see at Christmas time are presents. Okay, and you see and smell and hear all kinds of things that tell you it's Christmas time. But does anybody know what the real center of Christmas is? What do you think it is? Giving. Giving. You are awesome. So inside this box, I'll show you. Look at Lily, assist. See this? Anybody see that? There's a light inside that box. See? I've got a light. It's a candle. Yes. And Alex, would you read that candle? What does that say? Jesus. It says Jesus. So guess what? What is the center of Christmas? Yeah, the baby. birth of Jesus. The birth of Jesus and giving. All right, I need my top back. So how about if we all bow our heads and we say a little bit of a prayer, okay? Let me get rid of this. Dear Lord, as we see and smell and hear all the signs of, of Christmas, let us feel your warmth and caring around us. And let us help us pass it on to others. Amen. Merry Christmas, you guys. Have a wonderful holiday. Tonight's second scripture reading comes from Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 20. In that region where there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night, then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praying God and saying, praising God, glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. 
When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told about them, about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. So this year, instead of having Pastor Mark grace us with one of his wonderful Christmas Eve sermons. He actually asked if the New Testaments would be willing to do our Christmas play this year on Christmas Eve. So without any fur- anything further, I bring you Through the Eyes of a Child. It's Christmas time once again in the stores, in the schools, in the church, and at home. Holiday preparations stir us up into a whirlwind of activity. And it's that's sometimes difficult to catch our breath and reflect upon the very event we're celebrating the birth of our Savior. If we adults have trouble keeping Christ in Christmas, is it any wonder why our children get so caught up in the glitter and excitement that they forget about Jesus too? We need to remind them, and we need to remind ourselves, that God became man and dwelt among us, and that he came as a tiny child. Let's become children again. Let's visit a Sunday school classroom and hear the Christmas story again. Let's see the miracle of Christmas through the eyes of a child. Good morning, class. Good morning, morning, Mrs. Kate. Excuse me, Alex, I'm going to sit down here next to you. Is that all right? Yeah. Okay. Well, it's getting closer and closer to Christmas. Have any of you been doing anything to get ready? I made a list of everything I want. A scooter, a remote-controlled car, an electric train set. I'm going to be at a play at school, and I get to take a snowboard. My mom's going to take me Christmas shopping. I'm going to see the festival of light. Christmas shopping? Oh my goodness. Okay. I can see that you're all very busy with holiday preparations. Today we're going to get ready for Christmas too. I'm going to read you a story. Frosty the Snowman? Hello, we're all to read those reindeer. I love the poem Charles and Life Before Christmas. I love that one. No, none of those. My story is from the Bible. The true story of what happened on the first Christmas. Oh, the that's, real Christmas story. That's, oh, that story. Mary, Joseph, Shepherds, Angels, Dino stuff. Yes, it's an old story. What's wrong with that? Nothing really, but we heard it. Oh, keep going. It just isn't very exciting. It's kind of boring. Maybe you found it boring because you haven't understood it before. You need to get into the story. How do we do that? Imagine you're there. Try to understand how each person felt. Put yourself in their places. Put ourselves in their places? Yes. Use your imagination. Pretend you're a part of the story. And imagine what it would be like if that happened to you. Do you think you can do that? Yeah. Yeah. All right, then. Imagine yourself in the city of Nazareth, in the home of a young woman named Mary. An angel is about to speak to her. Can you visualize it? Yes. Yes, I can. I think we can see that. In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, in a town of Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid. Mary, you have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son. And you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. Then the angel left her. Wow, she must have been scared when that angel appeared. But the angel brought good news, so she must have been happy too. But what about Joseph? Oh 
An angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. I think I know what happened next. They went to Bethlehem. Let's see if you're right. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world, and everyone went to his own town to register. So they packed up and went to Bethlehem, right? Poor Mary, that's a lot of work for a pregnant lady. She had to get their clothes ready and pack the car. Wait a minute. They didn't have cars back then, did they? <laughs> no, they didn't. Now listen. So Joseph went up to the town of Nazareth in Galilee, to Judea, to Bethlehem the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. And in Bethlehem, they found there was no room for them in the inn. That part always makes me they had to go to a scrummy stable. I wouldn't want to sleep with smelly animals. But they had to. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. There were shepherds there too, weren't they? And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them. And the glory of the Lord shone through around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to men, on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby, who was lying in a manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what they had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. When did the wise men come? They came later. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been favored? We, see, we saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. They went on their way, and the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasure and presented him with gifts of gold and of incense and of myrrh. Is that the story? No, the way it's just the beginning. The baby Jesus grew up to become a man, but a very special man, because he was God as well. He spent his time here on earth loving people, teaching them, and healing them. And though he was God and had all the power of God, he let himself be put to death on the cross. I know why. It's for us. He took the punishment for our sins. That's right. To everyone who believes that Jesus died for their sins, and who wants more than anything else to belong to him, God gives the gift of eternal life. We know we're going to be with we we know we we're going to be with him forever. No gift can be greater than that, can it? No. Well, that's the Christmas story. It's about the gift of life that lasts forever and ever. The best part about the story is that you can be part of it too. If you believe. Merry Christmas class. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. I really feel like I'm a part of the story, don't you? Yes. yes.
I'd like to do something about it. What do you mean? I mean we should do something for Jesus to show him that we believe. Okay, but what can we do? I've got an idea. What is it? We can sing. A word of prayer. Um, I want to uh, give thanks to uh, Kelly Devine for offering our children's story this evening. And I must say, it's a good thing I have broad shoulders. Because normally at children's time, maybe half a dozen, perhaps 12 to 15 children. What on earth tonight? Kelly, we'll need to have you do that more often. Um, but I am delighted. Parents, of whatever age that you took the time to come and bring your young people here this evening. I don't need to give a cliche sermon about the true meaning of Christmas. You know it or you wouldn't be here. Just a quick vignette that I, sh I shared in a Sunday sermon two days ago. Over the weekend, our uh, clothing center offered a Christmas party for children of the neighborhood and those who, who use the clothing center. And our youth uh, and young people told the Christmas story in a variety of settings. They did it in a play. They did it in a story time in the ro from a rocking chair in the lounge. Some gathered around the Christmas tree here and told the story. And what was striking was how many parents who brought their children didn't know the story. They were as enthralled as their children were at hearing about the true meaning of Christmas. We were delighted that they came and brought their young people, delighted that you are here this night uh, to share in this remembrance of the season. And speaking again of our, of our young people, especially those in the play, as I was looking at the pictures on the screen, some of those people from back in Jesus' day looked very, very familiar. We thank uh, Katie and Kelly for pulling that together and to the members of the, I think it was the fourth, fifth, and sixth grade class who did the reading. Is that right? So we, we thank them for their contribution this night. Shall we turn to God in prayer? Lord God, in the deepest night, there rises the star of the morning, of birth, the herald of a new day you are making a day of great joy dawning in yet faint shafts of light and love. We hear the whispers of peace in the stillness, fresh breezes of promise stirring, winter sparrows chirping of life, a baby's cry of need and hope. It's Christmas. In the darkness we see the light and find in it comfort, confidence, cause for celebration, for the darkness cannot overcome it. And we rejoice to nourish, to nourish it in ourselves, in other people, and in the world, for the sake of him in whom it was born and shines forever, Jesus the Christ, who taught us to pray in these words, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. One of the most meaningful parts of Christmas Eve, no matter how many times we go through it, is the passing of the light. Hopefully when you came in, each of you got a candle. If you didn't, if you'd raise your hands and one of the ushers can, can see that you get one. Um, just a, a reminder that um, the ushers or Allison and I will come down and light the, uh, the first candle on the row and then you'll pass that down. And the, the best way for this to work, the best way is for the person, well, once she gets a lit candle, 
she, she's going to hold that, and I'm going to tip mine into it. Here comes the usher. If you didn't get a candle, there's one young fellow over here. There we go. All right. There we go. And then the person with the unlit candle to, to dip, tip theirs into it. And that, that avoids uh, wax dripping all over. And, of course, we know what happens, but it's just as magic when we see it again, isn't it? And that is to see the room in darkness and then little by little become light as more and more light from the candles fill the room. So with that, we'll uh, ask the ushers when they are ready if they would dim the lights. And Allison and I will come down and light your candles. <laughs>